Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unbox and Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do multiple upgrades on your Ace PC's Pico Box Pro. This may be very similar for other models. There are a few other brands on the market which look relatively similar and will potentially have the same layout internally. Obviously, do check when you're taking yours apart that yours looks the same inside, although pretty much the principles will be the same relatively universally across all of the models very similar to this. The only thing different is being that the Pico Box Pro actually has a removable slide on the bottom for additional storage. So let's get straight on with it. So some of the things you're gonna to need to use to go through this process, uh, potentially a knife or a scraper to remove some of the rubber pads on the bottom, and also a PH0 or PH00 screwdriver, depending on what you have available. Most small cross-headed screwdrivers will be absolutely fine. You will need a replacement drive. Now, for those of you that are wondering what drives you can actually use in this, this particular model supports both SATA SSD M.2 drives and also NVMe PCI Express M.2 drives. Of course, if you're doing the standard upgrade, which is from the bottom, that just takes a standard two and a half inch either SSD SATA drive or a hard disk drive with the SATA connections. Right, so we've got our little PC. I would suggest putting it on something uh, foam or some sort of cloth just to protect the surfaces whilst you're working on it. So if you flip the unit over, you'll see on this particular one, we have got this removable section. So depending on what you want to do, if you just want to install a SATA base drive, such as this one, all you need to do is to get your screwdriver and remove these two screws here. With the screws loosened off, you should be able to, using a finger, just open up this cover. So all you want to do is to just make sure that those connectors there match up with what is in there. So in this instance, it is this way round. And all you need to do is just slide it in. You can use a screwdriver just to give it a little bit of leverage. And there we go. That is the drive attached. So that is, if you're just upgrading the storage at the bottom deck, that is how to do it. Then what we would need to do is to replace the back panel, put your screws back in, and that is pretty much it. If you're looking to upgrade the RAM, or you're looking to upgrade the actual NVMe storage and in the inside of the unit, then we do have to remove this section. So that's easy to do. So just move these slides across into the unlocked position. This section just lifts off and it reveals the bottom of the computer. This is only connected via a USB type C connection. So to get inside the actual PC itself, these four rubber plugs need to be removed to expose the screws. You can use a knife or something similar. You may be able to just peel them off. Put those to one side because you'll need to put them back in after. With those rubber pads removed, you can get your screwdriver and just insert it. And you'll find there are some screws in each one of these holes. You may need a magnet to actually retrieve them or just tap them out, as you can see. That's what the screw's like, and there are four of those in total. So remove all four, and then we can move on. Now with all four screws removed, we can turn the unit back up the right way round, and now we can lift off the top lid. Do be careful, because there is actually the RGB, which is connected via this wire here. Extra little tip for you, if you don't like the RGB, which is on the top lid, you can just disconnect this wire, just wiggle it loose, and then you'll have no more RGB. So now we can look inside to the actual unit itself. So processor is underneath this heat sink. This is quite easy to remove, just three screws if you need to do any repasting. Your M.2 drive is located here and is attached with that screw there. The memory is actually on the flip side of the unit, in which case we'll need to remove a few additional screws. So let's do the M.2 first of all. So if you want to swap out your M.2 drive, loosen off this screw and the drive will rise to about 45 degree angle and you can just simply wiggle the drive out. You can then grab your new drive. This one is an upgrade, so this is a one terabyte drive. You can use NVMe or SATA SSD based M.2 drives on this particular chipset in conjunction with the N95 Intel processor. Put the drive in, hold it in place a little bit, and then you can do the screw. Just do it until you feel some contact. Don't over tighten it as you may damage the drive. So that is the drive upgraded. Obviously, if you do need to transfer data from the old one, it's a really hard thing to do because this has only got one PCI Express M.2 slot. So that is a little bit tricky to do. We have done videos on how to transfer data. I'll try and link some of those in the video description. Now on to actually removing the entire assembly out so we can gain access to the RAM. 
So in order to do that, we need to spin this round a little bit. So there are two screws. One which is here. I'll just show you with the screwdriver. So let's all remove it while we're there. Put these to one side because you will be needing them again. And the other one is just tucked in here next to the heat shield assembly. A little bit tricky to get to. And move that to one side. Now that is all you have to do. There's no other screws holding in the main board. It's only those two screws at that end. So what you want to do now is to lift up the motherboard from the screw side and just being careful because you've got your ports connected here. So just lift up, you may need a little bit of a wiggle. And yep, yeah, there we go, you can hear it. There are some cables connected because you do have the antenna on the side, which is uh, connected for your Wi-Fi. So what you can do is just flip the unit over onto the back side and then you'll be able to see your RAM. So in this particular instance, the RAM which is installed is a DDR4 Sodim stick. We will put some links for upgraded models of this in the video description. It says on this one, this is actually DDR2400 mega transfers per second. You can actually buy up to and including 32 mega transfers per second RAM and it'll just automatically down clock. I think the fastest on this particular chipset is 2666 realistically you're better off buying the 3200 ram and down clocking the cheaper older stuff is actually more expensive weirdly so in order to actually remove the ram it's actually really straightforward and it's only single channel so there's only one physical slot the stick which is in here is eight you can actually buy these brand new with 16 gigs in if you wanted to potentially you can get a 32 gig stick in there as well but if you want to remove it little clips on the end and just release those just pry them apart You'll find the RAM pops up, much like our M.2 did, and then just grab on the outside edges, remove it, and you can pull it out. Now do take note, there is a little pin in the middle, or a locating notch. Just make sure when you put your new RAM in, which uh, we're gonna be doing at a later date, just make sure that you actually get that lined up correctly. So in order to put it back in, put it in at a, around about a 45 degree angle, until the little gold fingers disappear, and then just push down in the corners, until you hear to click. And that is it, that is put back into place. So now you can do basically the reverse and put it all back together. When you do this, make sure that when you're moving this around, just be careful of those cables on that side because you don't want to damage your Wi-Fi antenna. When it comes to putting it in, the side with the power jack goes in first and try and angle the ports down into the plastic and then you should find that it all matches up quite nicely. Then what we need to do is to put in the two screws, which are back in here. Basically, this is gonna be the reverse of the disassembly. So we're gonna grab our first little screw. You may find when you do this for the first time that actually removing the main board is very tricky and it doesn't feel like it wants to come out. It's just where the plastic's been molded. Don't worry about it too much, but you will need to use a little bit of additional pressure to remove it. I had the same thing, I figured it was actually stuck in or glued, but it isn't, it's just a little bit tricky the first time you do it. So we can put the screw back in there, which goes at the back, and that is pretty much essentially it. Now what we really need to do, if you want to, is to connect up the addressable RGB from this section here, if you do want that, which goes into this plug here in the middle of those three. I'll do that now. So there is the cable reconnected. It is key so it'll only physically fit in one way. And then when you put the top on, you should find that this cable just lies around the top. So it should say Ace PC that way, and your power button is just there. So when you're looking at your Ace PC on your desktop, no ports on the front, no on that side, just your power button on the opposite side there. So that's done. Now what we can do is to put the screws back into the bottom, re-stick on the plastic washers, and that's it, you're done. So there you go, there is how to do multiple upgrades and updates to your Pico PC. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If it has, smash that like button. If you want to see more content that's on a daily basis, then maybe consider hitting the subscribe button and the chime notification, and then you'll be notified of future video releases. Now, of course, if you've watched this video just because you're a fan of the channel and you actually want to get your hands on one of these tiny little PCs, you can pick them up for as little as around about £130. 
from the links in the video description. I will try and put some various ones in there for this specific one, which comes from Ace PCs and also for other similar ones on Amazon, etc. So do check those out. But I think these are actually really cool little devices. The N95 quad core processor is actually pretty decent. So if you just want a basic workhorse PC or for browsing the internet, catching up on emails, maybe playing a very few casual games, then I think these are a really good idea. And as we've seen in the video, extremely easy to upgrade. If you want to expand the storage, maybe up to one terabyte, two terabyte or beyond, you can do very easily with MVME storage. And also if you want to add some additional underneath storage as well, which is removable, then you can put in some older HDDs or SSDs, two and a half inch size, again, very easy to do. And doubling up the RAM from the standard eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes will give Windows a little bit more breathing room and is highly recommended, although obviously it does add a little bit to the price. So have a look on their website. If you can find this particular version with 16 gigs installed from the factory, that is possibly the preferable way to go if it is a suitable price. If not, for around about £25 to £30 here in the UK, you can double up your RAM to 16 gigs very, very easily. Anyway, I've waffled on for way too long. Let's wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.